What's wrong with this picture? If you know, you know. If you don't know, you'll know after watching this video. Hey Garage Fabbers, Man Candy here. During my time as a suspension fabricator for hire, I somehow became the fixer of other people's builds. The thing I fixed most is probably incorrectly installed bushings. It's super simple, but just because it's simple doesn't mean it's common sense. I absolutely got some of this stuff wrong on my first build. So here's a quick bushing how-to for those of you planning on building your own suspension. By the way, when I say the word bushing, I am referring to the entire bushing assembly. The proper name would be a rod end, but I just like to frustrate the smart people. There are five main components to a bushing. The bushing tabs, the through bolt, the inner sleeve, the bushing material, in this case polyurethane, and the outer sleeve, which will usually be welded to the end of a link bar or a control arm. Hey, the tabs aren't part of a bushing. Oh yeah? Well, you, my friend, might be building your bushings wrong. I like to think of bushings as two separate assemblies, and I think you should too. You have the suspension component side, which has the bushing material and the outer sleeve, and the chassis side, which consists of the tabs, the bolt, and the inner sleeve. When properly made and properly assembled, the chassis side parts make one solid piece. There are no moving parts. The inner sleeve does not rotate around the bolt. Are you surprised? I know I was. When the bolt is tight, the tabs are clamped tightly against the sides of the inner sleeve. The suspension component side, the assembly consisting of the outer sleeve and the bushing material, rotates around the stationary inner sleeve. The outer sleeve could technically rotate around the bushing material, but it probably won't. The inner sleeve is lubricated and the outer sleeve is not. On many bushings, you can see channels formed into the wall of the inner hole of the bushing material. Those are there to allow lubrication to reach all the important spots. Grease goes in the zerk fitting in the outer sleeve. It's forced into a small space between the two bushing halves and makes its way through those channels between the polyurethane and the inner sleeve until finally lubricating the outer edges of the bushings that contact the bushing tabs. <gasps> there is no grease inside the sleeve around the bolt. Why? Because the inner sleeve does not move. I was certified by Toyota to work on Toyota products for a living. Occasionally we see trucks that have bushing through bolts rusted and seized inside the inner sleeve. If you would like to coat the bolt in grease in an attempt to prevent rust, have at it. It won't hurt a thing, but it's not required. Now that we know how bushings work, let's get one and then we'll make some tabs for it. I get my bushings from Thorbros.com. Once again, I'm not sponsored. They're just really good products. I consistently use two inch diameter bushings but the width of the bushing varies based on the size of the material I'm using to make the link bar. If I'm using 1.5 inch tubing, I'll order 2.5 inch wide bushings. Here's why. I like to have a quarter inch of the outer sleeve sticking out past the link bar as a shelf to lay the weld bead on. A quarter inch on both sides equals one half inch. Thorbros identifies their bushings by total bushing width. That's the width of the outer sleeve with both polyurethane bushing halves installed. The flares on the polyurethane bushings are a quarter inch thick. There's two of them, so that adds another half inch. A half inch of polyurethane plus a half inch of stick out equals one inch larger than the link bar. Now that we've got a professionally made bushing, let's check it out. Notice that the inner and outer sleeves are not the same width. The inner sleeve is significantly wider. This is intentional and important. Put both bushing halves in the outer sleeve and now they're the same width. When you tighten the bolt, the inner sleeve stops the link bar tabs from bending inward and crushing the polyurethane. If you'll be installing a grease fitting, check to make sure that there's a small gap between both bushing halves and make sure that gap is lined up with the threaded hole for the Zerk fitting. If this gap is too tight or the polyurethane is covering the hole, you won't be able to inject grease into the fitting. A quick side note on grease. Some greases will eat away at rubber, polyurethane, or Delrin. So make sure the grease you're using is compatible with the bushing material you're using. Next, let's make some link bar tabs. 
You've probably seen me tracing around a bushing when I create link bar tabs. That's because the tabs should completely cover the sides of the bushing. Depending on the application, there might be a lot of force on the side of this bushing. A properly sized tab will support the side of the bushing and keep the outer sleeve from slipping off the bushing material. And will also keep the tabs from chewing up the sides of the bushing. Lastly, the holes. This one is really important. The through bolt should fit snugly into both the inner sleeve of the bushing and the hole in the tabs. In other words, the hole in the tabs and the inside diameter of the inner sleeve are the same size. In other words, again, and I'm trying to make this clear because this is the thing I see done wrong more than anything else. The inner sleeve cannot fit through the hole in the tabs. If it does, the bolt can't clamp the sleeve in place and the whole assembly rotates around the bolt. That's really not good. A brief side note on bolts. I always use grade eight bolts on link bars, usually nine sixteenths inch bolts. My reasoning is simple. This is equivalent to the size bolt that Toyota uses on their link bars and control arms. I once learned from Max Fish that the shank of a bolt, this unthreaded part, should stretch the entire distance between the link bar tabs. The reason is a bolt is more likely to break in the threaded area. So you should purchase a bolt with a shank long enough to span the width of your link bar tabs. This means though, that you will likely have excess threads sticking out that you'll want to trim off. If all this is good, you should be able to slap everything together, tighten the bolt to your bolt's recommended torque, and you're ready to keep moving forward. See you soon, my friends.